Hey, Dan here with Home Meets Road. And in case you are new around here, in 2018, we decided to buy a 1972 travel trailer, rebuild it from the frame up, sell everything we own and hit the road. In this week's episode, it is October of 2019 and we just arrived in California to meet up with some family and to go to one of the biggest RV shows in the Southwest. Now, why in the world are we going to an RV show if we build our very own RV? And that's because I had the crazy idea that I could build the perfect RV for our family without ever living in one. Now that I say that out loud, that just sounds ridiculous. But before we get to the RV show, let's catch up to when we arrived in California. The first night we had to spend at a Cracker Barrel because we did not make any reservations whatsoever and it nipped us in the butt. Everything was full, there were no openings anywhere. The next morning we did find an opening at the Mission RV Park in Redlands, California. And this was the first time we were cramped in like sardines. Our trailer is 29 feet from tip to tail with no slides and if we were any longer I don't think we could have fit. The truck itself was sticking out into the roadway. I don't think we're going to go back here anytime soon. We arrived about a week early in California, mainly to get some work done before the RV show, but we got lucky and the Lucas Oil Off-Road Expo was in town. Now, before we had Braxton, Jessa and I were big time into off-roading and tent camping was kind of life. So it was great to go here, see some 4x4s, and some of these Overland trucks were pretty awesome and the adventure trailers were really cool. I wish we could make this work, but being full time on the road with a family of three, I, no, not gonna happen. I came from the mud, desert on my hands, strong like a tree, there's roots where I stand. I made the mistake of taking Braxton onto a Jeep test drive and every day since he's asked if we could buy a Jeep. Honestly, I want to say yes. They want to get hey. a Jeep. Yeah, he wants to buy a Jeep now. Like I told you. I know. <laughs> I know. Let's just get to the RV show and why you shouldn't build your own RV. Um, First and foremost, if you've never lived in an RV, whether it's full-time or part-time, trying to design a floor plan that not only works around the wheel wells, but also the windows and with your family in mind is pretty much impossible. You may think you know what you're doing, but honestly, no. Until you're on the road, it is really tough to gauge what you need and what you don't need. Even manufacturers don't get it right. Take a look at this floor plan. Most full-timers will probably recognize immediately what the problem is. And that's that when the slide is in, you can't get to the bathroom. That means on drive days, especially with kids, you're gonna have some serious issues. The second part is storage. Until you're on the road living in one of these things, you don't realize how many things they really need. 
from your plumbing, your sewer, your electrical, and hey, throw in a generator, some camping chairs, and maybe a Blackstone or something else. There's just so many things you need to be comfortable on the road because hey, you're clamping and we're living in this thing full time. So storage is a huge thing and it always seems to be a second thing after designing the floor plan. It was for us. We designed this floor plan to work around everything else the refrigerator, the beds, the couch, things like that. And then storage was kind of the afterthought. And it seems like that even with manufacturers. Take a look at this, for example. I have no idea what these guys want us to store in this. The, this space is useless. The third, and this might be number one, if you are thinking about building a travel trailer or a fifth wheel, um, weight distribution. Uh, trying to get the weight right on this thing so it would actually go straight down the road was extremely difficult. We weighed almost every single part that went into this thing in order to get, get the weight distribution right. I think that's one of the main reasons why so many people build a van or a schoolie. It's just less things to worry about. Um, it's still important but not as important as when you're toying with one of these things, especially when you're towing with a half-ton truck. Now, my next point is one of those hindsight moments that we didn't realize until we hit the road, and it's this gold or silver pretty little sticker that most new RVs have, the RVIA certificate. And that basically just states that the manufacturer certifies this RV that it meets certain insurance guidelines. If you're building an RV that people definitely can tell immediately it's custom, like something classic like this or a schoolie for example you may run into issues on the road and these are things that we didn't realize a lot of rv parks require your rig to be 10 years or newer most of it just has to do with looks they don't want an rv that's about to fall apart some though like thousand trails for example requires that every rv is rvia certi certified so that it meets their insurance guidelines and policies. Now, spoiler alert, we are in a thousand trails right now. And that's because our sales guy went to bat for us and got us a RVIA exempt form. So if you have something old school like this or you have a schoolie, for example, let us know and we will get you in contact with him. Along that line, you may have a problem getting insurance yourself. We had an issue with ours, not only because she's 48 years old, but also because of our windows. They are not considered a fire exit. So it took us a while to get the proper insurance for this trailer, um, something where it is actually covered for the amount that we put in her. So we've got a huge stack of receipts just for the insurance company.
I think this next point is kind of obvious, but I think it does need to be covered. You have no warranties on the trailer. You built it, you are the mechanic, you need to pay for it, you need to fix it. But this goes with everything you're putting into the RV as well. Our air conditioning, for example, the warranty is null and void because we put it in ourselves. It wasn't done by an AC professional. Solar panels. Our solar panels are, uh, the warranty is null and void because we put that on an RV and they're not supposed to go on an RV. About the only warranty that we can trust is going to be upheld is the Battleborn batteries. Here you have a company that stands behind their product no matter what. Okay, this next one is going to be hard to hear and my ego is still bruised from it. You're not going to get it right the first time. Even if you are a full timer, you're not going to get a build right the first time. There are so many hindsight moments I've had where I'm like, what was I thinking? Yeah, and things are going to break. I don't care if you're spending a million dollars on an RV or if you're building something yourself, things will break. You're taking these things down the highway at 70 miles an hour. It's like an earthquake. Things will break. Just expect it. Now, other than my ego, you might be wondering why on earth did we build one? And it's because Jessa and I are DIYers and we can't buy anything without modifying it. So we thought, why not build, an, build a trailer? A, just, I don't know what I was thinking. Um, the whole reason behind it was we pulled back the skirt on an RV and we saw the rat's nest of wiring and plumbing and honestly I think my heart skipped a beat there for a second and not in a good way. Uh, yeah, my OCD wasn't having it. I want something nice and clean where I know exactly what each wire does and what its load rating is. So here's a great shot of our electrical system. Now, did we actually find something at this show we would consider? And yes, we did. The Forest River Sunseeker 2850 Class C. This floor plan truly is amazing and somehow it works with the slide in or out. It just gives you extra space, but you really don't need to put the slide out if you don't need to. If somebody would make this in a 4x4 Super C that I could actually afford, I would be all over it. Now after we left Redlands, California, we ironically ended up at Waypoint Ventura Vintage Trailer Hotel as they call it now. And ironically enough, this is an RV park that only allows vintage rigs which was great for us because we couldn't find anything in the area to meet up with family and this place well allowed us in about the only exception is if you have an airstream airstreams are kind of exempt from everything now if you have an airstream or a vintage rv this place is pretty awesome if you don't you can stay in one of the ones they have they have done a fantastic job of remodeling these and again I keep saying this ironically it made us fall in love with vintage trailers while here and we just decided to fix some of the issues we're having with this and change a couple of things to make it work for us 
that does not mean that we haven't stopped looking for the perfect RV, whether that is going to be a brand new one, a used one that we're just going to do modifications to, or a frame up rebuild again. Only time will tell. So thanks for watching and happy travels.